God is able, He will never fail, He is almighty God, greater than all we see, greater than all we have, He has done great things, lifted up, defeated the grave, raised to life. Our God is able in His name we overcome. For the Lord our God is able. So God is with us. He is on our side. He will make a way. Far above all we know. Far above all we hope. He has done great things. Lifted up. Defeated the grave. Raised to life. Our God is here. We overcome for the Lord our God is able. So God is with us. He will go before. He will never leave us. He will never leave us. God is for us. He has open arms. He will never fail. You will never fail us. Lift it out. Defeat is the grave. Raised to life. Our God is able. In His name we overcome. For the Lord our God is able. Lift it out. Defeat is the grave. To life, our God is able. In His name, we overcome. For the Lord, our God is able. For the Lord, our God is able. For the Lord, our All right, well, welcome to Dallas Church this morning. Uh, my name is Jeff. Uh, our God is able. It's good to worship together today. If you are brand new with us, we want to invite you after the service ends, come on out to our connection table. Say hello to David. He's got a, a welcome gift for you. If you're new with us online, say hello to your chat host. Uh, they'd love to hear from you and interact with you there. Today, we are going to continue the Mythical Gods series that Pastor Ben started last week. We're going to be able to hear from one of our elders, John Ellingson, today. I'm really excited about that. Let's pray and just begin this time of worship together. Lord Jesus, uh, thank you that you are here with us today and that we uh, do serve a God that wants to hear from us and spend time with us. God, help us as we sing, as we fellowship, as we give, and we, and we love together as a church family today. In Jesus' name, amen. Cause your love, our 
hearts are clean. We lift you up. A song of freedom. Forever Your love, our hearts are clean. We lift you up with song of freedom. Forgiven, cause your love, our hearts are clean. We lift you up, the song of freedom, forever went Cause your love, yeah, we're forgiven. Cause your love, our hearts are clean. We lift you up with song of freedom. Forever when she cause your love. Bad news is, my name is Jonathan. It's not, shouldn't be that bad. The bad news is, my name is Jonathan, and I'm a liar. So that's all we have time for today. So thanks for being here. Um, um, no, the bad news is, my name is Jonathan, and I am, that's not the bad news. The bad news is, I am a liar, and I have believed things and said things about God and about reality that simply aren't true. The bad news is we are surrounded by lies and by <clears throat> things, false views of God and false views of reality. The good news is um, we're not going to share any of those on purpose today. And the good news is there is good news, and we're going to look into that, to that today. Um, how about you? Um, are you a liar? Have you said things or believed things about God or reality that just aren't true? Um, can I ask you a question? I like to ask that before I ask a question. I assume it's okay, but what does it feel like to be wrong? Now, it's kind of a trick question. It's not what does it feel like to realize you're wrong? Because you can feel that, right? If I'm lying to you right now, I would feel that. I'd be, Ooh, you know, I could feel that. But what does it feel like to be wrong? And the trick is, it doesn't feel like anything. It feels like being right. And that's why what we're about to do right now is so important. We're going to pray, and we're going to listen to some good news. Psalm 46.10 says, Be still 
and know that I am God. And so right now, I'd like you to pray with me. Lord, give us wisdom this morning. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart open to receive what is true, a heart open to receive you. Amen. Now, welcome to Dallas Church. We are in a series called Mythological Gods. We're in the second week. Um, and most people believe in some kind of God, right? Um, often when people say God, they say they believe in God or they don't believe in God. It's probably not the God that we find in Scripture. It's probably not the God we find that went to the cross. Um, there's a phrase that when we were preparing these, this series that we kept coming up, tell me about the God you don't believe in. I probably don't believe in that God either. Um, last week, Pastor Ben talked about the superhero God or the body co- bodyguard God, a version of God where it's Superman jumping in and to save the day. And he had one main point. We're going to pass out some tests right now to see how well you listened from last week. And uh, what was the, the main point from last week? Um, God is good and bad things still happen. God is good and bad things still happen. The title of this message is A Vending Machine God. How many of us view God as a sort of vending machine? A gift giver there when we need something or a kind of Santa Claus? Or maybe a broken vending machine. Some people view God as, I keep putting in my quarters and nothing comes out. Um, And here's the point this week. Here's the point this week. God will provide, but he is not a vending machine. He's not a broken vending machine either. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Today we'll look at how God does and doesn't provide, and how he asks us to ask, and how he asks us to pray. So we'll start our journey in Exodus 16. Um, And the subheading in your Bible probably says bread of heaven or maybe manna and quail. Right? And here's the story. Moses and Aaron and the Israelites are led out of Egypt. And they're in the wilderness. And they start to grumble. They remember the snacks they used to have. And they're hungry. And they're like, this is horrible. I hate this. We're hungry. And God tells Moses that he is going to rain bread from heaven. And he gives them very specific instructions. He says, you're going to collect it every day and collect just enough. And on the day before the Sabbath, you're going to collect twice as much and you're not going to work on the Sabbath. And he said that this is a test. Now, when I hear rain bread from heaven, I, I kind of have a cloudy with a chance of meatballs scenario going on in my head. Does anybody else think? When you hear rain bread from heaven, what do you picture? I picture donuts and croissants and a pastry case turned upside down and sourdough and wheat and white and rye loaves raining from the sky. Um, it wasn't exactly like that. Um, but it was enough. It was what they needed. Um, and that was the manna. The manna that was on the ground. It was kind of a flaky film on the ground. You can read about it more. But Exodus says it was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. God provided. He rained bread from the sky. Now remember, God will provide, but he is not a vending machine. He is the king of kings and lord of lords. It was bread and it sustained them, but it wasn't Krispy Kremes. Um, So, because sometimes we pray and we ask for something, we have a vision of what that will look like. Um, And it's God's will and not ours. So we began with bad news. We were surrounded by lies and false beliefs. Sometimes not on purpose, right? You can think back of something you believed and then later you're like, oh, I was wrong about that. Um, But the good news is the gospel. And the good news is the life and teachings of Jesus. And those stories can be found in this book. And the gospels are the first four books, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And if you want an accurate picture of who God is, who Jesus is, read the gospels. And that's where we're going to turn now. We're going to turn to a section called, uh, or a prayer called the Lord's Prayer. And you can find that in Matthew 6 and Luke 11. It should probably be called the Disciples' Prayer. Um, And the context for each is a little bit different. We're going to look into that a little closer this morning. Um, In Matthew 6, it's in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 6, 5, Jesus says, And when you pray, 
And then he talks about, he says, don't do it like the hypocrites do, that stand up in the squares and they say all these words and they kind of make a performance of it. He says, God knows what you need before you ask. God knows what you need before you ask. And he says, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, or holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. It's hard to imagine talking to a vending machine like that. Right? Our Father in heaven. It's hard to imagine talking to a vending machine like that. God is not a vending machine in the break room at work. God is not a vending machine in the stadium before the game. He's not a vending machine in the lobby or the corner of a church. He's not some version of Santa with a sack waiting for us to ask for the latest trinkets. And he's not a broken vending machine either, where we put in the quarters and nothing happens. He is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He knows what we need before we ask. When we need bread, he can rain it from the sky. Pray like this, Jesus said, Our Father in heaven, your kingdom come, your will be done. A vending machine does not have a kingdom or a plan for your life. A vending machine does not yeah, have a kingdom. Or I was going to say, and I said it earlier, I said, and Amazon and Apple and Disney don't have kingdoms or a plan for your life. And then I was like, wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Or like add to the list, MLB, add any company, right? They don't have a kingdom or a plan. For, and then you're like, oh, or do they? And Jesus said, when you pray, our Father in heaven, your kingdom come, your will be done. <laughs> right? Ecclesiastes 5.2 says, God is in heaven. You are on earth. Let your words be few. Our Father in heaven. If you turn to Luke 11, we have another version of the Lord's Prayer. And one of his disciples is watching Jesus pray. And throughout Luke, there's examples of Jesus praying for all kinds of in all kinds of situations. He asks us to pray. But one of his disciples is watching Jesus real close. He's like, hey, can you tell me, how do, okay, how do you do it? Right? Have you ever asked somebody that knows how to do something? You're like, okay, how do you do it? Like, tell me how to do it. And Jesus said, okay. I'll show you how to pray. And Jesus says, say this, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation. Same prayer, fewer words. God is in heaven, we are on earth. Let our words be few. God knows what we need, right? So in Luke 11, after Jesus says this, this is how you pray. He has a few things to say about asking and receiving and God knowing what we need. So we're going to look closer at verses 9 through 13. And you've heard this before, right? Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. But let's keep reading. Verse 11 says, What father among you if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So, I've been reading those verses for many years now. And after becoming a father to a son obsessed with snakes and scorpions, this really hits different. Um, uh, and I read this to my son this morning at the breakfast table. And you know what? My son has asked for a snake over and over and over again. <laughs> and we did not give him a snake. My son has asked for a scorpion over and over and over again. And we did not give him a scorpion. You can ask Chris. We did not. We have given him fish. And we have given him eggs. And when he said this morning, this was his question, how is that evil? He was eating eggs <laughs> that Chris made. He was eating eggs this morning. Um, parents aren't vending machines either, right? We are more than vending machines. Um, 
what father among you if his son asks for a fish? Um, and now it's time to talk about butts, um, which was really funny when I said that this morning to my kids. But um, the butts with one T, um, ask, seek, knock, but, but, but. Sometimes it's not given, found, opened, right? Ask, seek, knock, but sometimes it's not given, found, received. Um, our last series at Dallas Church was on miracles, um, and we went through the miracles of Jesus, and the series before that we, was called Breakthroughs. You saw Ryan's shirt. It says breakthroughs. And we talked about breakthroughs and praying for miracles and praying for breakthroughs. And right now you're all sitting here with something you're asking for. You're all sitting here with something you're looking for. And you're all probably knocking on a door that hasn't opened yet. Does that mean God's a liar? No. God will provide, but he's not a vending machine. We're a broken vending machine. He knows what we need. Um, now, we could dive into deeper about the things, the healings you're waiting for, all of the things right now that you're sitting with. Um, I'm going to take a little more of a comedic turn with it, but we could, you can see how you could lean into that. Um, how many of you right now are thanking God for a prayer that he did not answer? a relationship, maybe a certain, maybe a horse, maybe a snake or a scorpion. Um, have you heard the term buyer's remorse, right? There's probably a prayer's remorse too. Um, there's a comedian that tells a joke and the premise of the joke is, what if we all became the first thing we wanted to be? So think about it. What was the first thing you wanted to be? And his joke is we would have way too many princesses and ninjas and astronauts. Right. Um, I said that to Coral this morning, my daughter, and she's like, oh, no. I would be a princess. Right. Um, and we need ninjas and Navy SEALs and probably dolphin trainers. Um, but not that many. Right. <laughs> so do we thank God, too, for the and he did not answer ask, seek, knock. But it's not given or found or opened. And sometimes it's a knock and sometimes it's um, it's but the good news is the good news is we are in good company. We are in good company this morning. Um, the Apostle Paul wrote about a thorn. If you read in 2 Corinthians 12, 8, three times, take it away from me. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And here's, that is why, for Christ, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The Apostle Paul said, three times I asked for it. It's God's will, not ours. And Jesus, we can read about this in Mark 14. Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he was his three closest friends, Peter, James, and John. And Jesus said, my soul is overwhelmed to the point of death. Will you keep watch with me? And his friends were like, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. And then they fell asleep, right? But he... Uh, <laughs> Jesus falls to the ground and he prays to his father and he says, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. And the cup and Jesus went to the cross for us. And that's why we're sitting in this room today. We are in good company. It's God's will, not ours. If we read Hebrews 11, we see example after example of folks who didn't get what they asked for. 
for what they had worked for. Not completely, not completely, but God's will was done. Abel and Noah and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Sarah and Moses and Rahab and the list can go on and on throughout history even. Here are the last verses of Hebrews 11. And all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised. And we will almost end here today in the beginning of Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, we are in good company, amen, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who endured the cross, despising his shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. God will provide what we need, but he's not a vending machine or a broken vending machine taking our quarters. He is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It's God's will, not ours. So our point today, and you'll be quizzed on this next week, <laughs> uh, God gives us what we need when we need it. And sometimes that doesn't look like what we might want or think it should. Um, but our job is to trust and obey. God gives us what we need when we need it. Our job is to trust and obey. Will you pray with me this morning? Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Your will, not ours, not Amazon's or Disney's or MLB's or, or, or. Your will be done. Forgive us as we forgive others. Guide us away from temptation. Guide us away from evil. Amen. Thank you, John. Let's respond to that with a time of communion together. As John said, we're, uh, we're in good company here today. And so as a church family, we can come to the communion table where there's um, a little container with a wafer and some juice in there to represent Jesus' body and blood uh, shed for us on the cross. Um, there's also a, a giving box so that we can help the mission of Dallas Church financially. You can put a check in there. You can also give online through the Church Center app and through our website, uh, dallaschurch.org. But let's, uh, let's come to the table uh, today, and let's come free of our burdens. You know, John talked a minute ago about our job is to trust God. I think often for you and I, our main job is we have a time of communion where we're going to be holy with God is we have to set all of our cares and worries to the side first. We get so bogged down and so stressed out, and when we're living in, in a sinful condition anyway, and we get so distracted that oftentimes we come to this table and we're not ready to truly be with the author and the perfecter, uh, the creator of the universe. And so let's do that today. Uh, in Matthew chapter 11, it says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Gosh, don't you and I need that right now? To set our burdens aside, to lighten our load, and put it on the capable shoulders of Jesus Christ? We can do that right now, friends and family, even online uh, in the comfort of your home, um, your bedroom. Maybe you're on a walk right now listening into this uh, service. We can do that together as we celebrate communion. Uh, Ryan and, and Chris are going to lead us in some song. Let's pray and take this time uh, to bring our burdens to the table of Jesus. Lord God, thank you for this word from John today. Uh, thank you that you see us. You know our burdens. You know what we struggle through, Lord. And we have a way uh, to bring those to your feet as we celebrate communion, as we put you back in the rightful place in charge of our life once again. Be our Lord. Uh, be our author and the perfecter of all that we face. We trust you, Jesus. We need you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
maker. You give life an eternal spark. I call you healer. You can mend any broken heart. I call you faithful father. For sin is everything you start. My soul is made to respond. Know you by a thousand names. You deserve every single one. You've given me a million ways to be amazed at what you've done, and I am lost in wonder. And is patient you're never giving up on me I call you bondage breaker cause you're handing out the prison keys my soul was made to be free
thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for a change to come Knowing the battles won For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness your faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my confidence you never fail me yet yeah. I know the night you word will come to hell Jesus will sing your praise again Jesus you're still enough Keep me within your love my heart will sing your praise again. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. Still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me. Yeah. I'm still in your hand. This is my 
Joining us today, again, if you are new, uh, come on out to the connection table and see David. He's got a gift for you. 
I want to tell you a little bit about next week. So next Sunday is a big day. Maybe you haven't heard, it's Mother's Day. So you're, you're all on notice. We've got to get ready for moms, right? Um, also here at Dallas Church, families and families celebrating in Jesus together is a big deal around here. Um, we are going to have baby dedications after second service. So what better way to celebrate Mother's Day? Get your mom, come down here, see some babies, get dedicated. It's going to be a big family love affair. All right. So come on out for that. It's been great to worship with you today. Let's go be the church.